hello students first of all i welcome all the freshers who have taken admission to the two year master degree program in physics at the pondicherry university in fact you have taken the admission based on the all india entrance examination so therefore i welcome you all for this new program and you are going to uh, do this particular program along with the five year integrated msc students which means those students are currently completed their first three years of the integrated msc program which means they are they are in the fourth year right now so they will be along with you so fourth year and the fifth year for them and for you it will be the first year and the second year after bsc so the integrated students have taken the admission after the higher secondary school once again their selection is also based on the all india entrance examination conducted by pondicherry university so so the point is that we will be having uh, we will be having a mixture of students uh, who have completed the bsc degree and uh, we have taken the admission now and the other students have already taken the admission 3 years back that means they have just completed all the 3 years and they are entering into the fourth year of their five year program so right now this particular online course is uh, right now i am giving because of the covid 19 lockdown and until this particular scenario is there we will be having the online classes and once things get restored we will be having the normal classes inside the campus so today is an introductory course so that means this is going to be the first lecture uh, you can see the board here of course i'll show this uh, i am looking into the board actually board means i am having the computer monitor in which i am writing so you can see uh, whatever i am writing and explaining so this particular course is actually course code is phys 432 and uh, this is a master degree course and therefore the difficulty level will be at the masters level and i am taking the course for classical mechanics so you will be having some hard course and soft course those details uh, must be already available to you or it must have been discussed to you by other faculty members so the classical mechanics is going to be a hard core paper hard core paper means it's going to be a compulsory paper for all the students who are going to uh, register for the msc physics program so this is the first point soft core means you it is called it is optional or it can be called as elective okay elective paper is sometimes known as soft core but we use as a, a standard uh, terminology namely the hard core paper and the soft core paper hard core means they are compulsory for a particular degree program soft core means they are optional uh, you can either take it or you can leave it and take some other paper offered by some other department okay that is uh, the meaning of soft core so okay that's fine so now coming to the subject and coming to the your expectations most of the most of you have joined or every one of you will join with some great expectation or at least with some expectation thinking that this pondicherry central university the the master degree program if you see the syllabus and the course structure and the examination pattern and whatever the project that you are going to do and overall what you call the overall uh, learning experience of the pondicherry university will be on par with any other uh, best institutions in india or abroad in general so that is the first thing that you need to know so why i am giving this particular information is that you should first know where you have joined and uh, whether you are whether you will achieve uh, whatever you are planning to achieve so uh, whether the pondicherry university will help you to make your achievements possible or not so that should be clear to you so only then you will get an interest to um, to further study or further continue the program or whatever you call okay so that's why i am telling this is very important because the place where you are going to join it doesn't matter whether you join pondicherry university or any other university but wherever you join you will have an expectation that uh, that particular institute should be uh, helping you to 
grow yourself in an academic manner and uh, that will promote your education and then taking a placement etc so in that way pandicherry university has been doing very well both in teaching as well as in the research which you can find it in the in the website and other media okay there are uh, different rankings are there for the pandicherry university and uh, you can also see how many of your seniors got admission to iits and abroad for a doctorate program several of them have joined in fact so so these are the things that will help you to uh, first of all get a good feeling about uh, the place where you joined and therefore you feel happy and then proceed further on your education so this is the first point and this is and this is also important point by the way because the course structure syllabus and the examination pattern will all help you to write down further competitive examination such as the gate examination or the csar net physics okay or any other uh, competitive examination uh, either abroad or within india for example there are many other competitive examinations are conducted by for example just or tfr or individually they also conduct uh, some other institution like indian institute of astrophysics etc for their respective doctoral programs so irrespective of whatever be the kind of competitive examination that you are going to face after 2 years for that you have to get prepared right from today it is not something that is very easy at the last minute for you to prepare because this 2 year msc program is going to be very tight schedule it will not be something similar to your 3 year bsc course in the case of the 3 year bsc course generally you will be having a considerable amount of free time and when compared to that kind of free time for the first 3 years that you already had you will not have such a situation now this 2 year msc program is is going to be a tight schedule you won't find much free time of course there will be a little free time will be there but you can't have a lot of free time that you already enjoyed in the case of the uh, bsc program first 3 years that you already did it won't be like that so this is very important and the meaning of this statement is that you can't accumulate the subject matter and then read at the last minute if you are going to do that it's going to be uh, uh, it's going to be uh, totally a flop for you or you can't uh, even clear the examination so this is very important point so those who are to prepare slowly you prepare day by day as the classes are going on otherwise uh, the, the 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 syllabus is very vast and uh, it is also going to be highly mathematical in nature and therefore uh, following this particular uh, two year msc program requires considerably a good amount of mathematics background in case if you if you are not good in uh, mathematics you have to equip yourself and that's a very important statement right now because the any other paper that you are going to study all the hardcore papers are basically uh, mathematical in nature starting from mathematical physics two papers are there classical mechanics quantum mechanics you have two papers then you have statistical mechanics then you have the condensed matter physics and any other soft course for example quantum entanglement electrodynamics all these papers whatever i told all of them are theoretical in nature which means it requires very good uh, mathematics background so this is an introductory information because uh, you can't just read something without mathematics you can't memorize memorizing is uh, practically useless okay so this is the point and uh, coming to the classes we will explain every step that we are going to do so in that way there is no trouble for you but only thing is you'll have to follow what is being explained in the class and for that you should have the background mathematics so you should also uh, parallelly study or parallelly have uh, necessary mathematics books with you and then follow the uh, follow sufficient exercise okay if you are not going to do that practice by yourself then you will feel a uh, considerable difficulty as time goes along and once you complete one semester time and then find it very difficult afterwards catching the train is difficult 
so that's why i'm giving all this information right now because slowly if you can equip yourself slowly of uh, right now uh, then things will be fine and of course uh, let me not go into the details of how the gradings are awarded how the uh, internal examination is going to be so those things right now uh, let me not explain so you will understand as things go along but our important point about the examination pattern is that in the pondicherry university you have a theory plus a problem solving questions will be there so you can't write only theory and then totally neglect the problems that's not possible so if it is if you want to do like that probably you will be getting just pass you can't get any good grade if you are going to neglect problem solving so problem solving is going to be a very compulsory part of the the education curriculum in the physics department so that is the one that is going to help you to clear the other competitive examinations such as the gate or the just or the csa or net so these are the points and then coming to the syllabus wise it is uh, the syllabus will completely fit with the uh, any other examination that you are going to write for example gate examination physics syllabus or the csa or net physics examination syllabus any syllabus you take it will match with the uh, syllabus of this pondicherry university that's because it is the standard course it's a standard syllabus that uh, any other university is going to follow i mean any other uh, prestigious university i mean any other institute that is going to follow so this is the introductory information i would like to tell and then we will of course be recommending uh, standard textbooks all the textbooks will be a uh, very standard textbooks that are being followed uh, both in india or in abroad and if you find difficulties in following that book you you yourself have to find out uh, some other alternative books uh, so that you read that alternative book and then again come back and read the original book that we are recommending so that is the point that you should know and let us coming to this classical mechanics part let me just show you first of all the the syllabus how the syllabus is uh, looking like yeah here it is the title of the uh, the title of the course course code phys 432 everything is there uh, usually in our uh, this uh, uh, the course structure will be such that there will be five units it is simply divided into different units so generally you will be having five units uh, so that the purpose of dividing the entire syllabus into units that each unit will get equal weightage for writing the examination in fact the uh, dividing it into unit is not very important but our in the university system we divide it in different units because from every unit you have to write an answer that is compulsory you can't clear or you can't pass the paper by reading only the first unit and i will neglect uh, or i will not read unit 2 3 4 etc that's not possible so that is the reason by dividing it into different units uh the end semester examination question paper will have questions from every unit that means all the five units there will be questions and you will have to answer from every unit you have to answer the question there will be choices will be there so that is the uh, purpose of dividing it into units generally division into units is not required you can dump everything and put it as a, a single paragraph but the purpose is now clear that Uh, every unit is equally important that the student cannot neglect a particular chapter unit means a chapter for example so you can't neglect or uh, you you can't say that i will not read the rigid body dynamics here or uh, if you can't say that i will not read a special theory of relativity if you do that what happens is you can't uh, you know passing the paper will be very difficult so you need to have 50% for uh, passing uh, with the internal plus the external marks so these are some of the introduction and uh, if you see this we will be having starting from lagrangian dynamics central force problem hamiltonian formulation of mechanics then the rigid body dynamics special theory of relativity so coming to the overall appearance of this particular syllabus we start with the the lagrangian dynamics which means that the any mechanics that you have already studied up to the uh, bsc level Uh, they may have a small introduction to the lagrangian uh, but that that will be only a basic introduction so we will be starting with the hamilton's principle 
and then uh, start the problems and solving so most of them will have will be solving the problems and before that we will be deriving the necessary equations so both we will be doing we will be doing both theory and problem solving and coming to the textbooks here it is recommended some of the textbooks uh, you can choose so here we have a list of six books and uh, the most easy book or most standard book which is uh, quite simple to read will be the book number one namely the Thornton and Merriam it's a very good book it, the book is written at a considerable introduction so that every student who is entering into master's program will be uh, capable of reading it and understand without much difficulty this is the for that's why we have written put it in the first book but if you are going to choose the fifth book for example the goldstein book and goldstein book by the way is um, once again it's a very standard book which is being followed by uh, the entire uh, of course a majority of the universities will follow the goldstein book but reading this goldstein book in the very beginning may be sometimes difficult that is why we have given an alternative book so you can start reading thornton and marion book and once you are comfortable uh, with the concepts and the other basics you can then open the goldstein book and start reading so reading uh, directly the goldstein book may be sometimes difficult so that's why we have kept it as a additional reading or supplementary reading the first book is excellent book no doubt about that and then the third book is also very good book it is also written at uh, with a considerable explanation uh, so that any any new student who is entering into master's program will be uh, capable of reading it it is written in such a way the book is easily approachable whereas goldstein book little difficult you you need to have some some more experience in mechanics only then you can read so that is why first of all you you take the first book or the third book whichever book is available you can have a copy with you and then once you start reading the book number one and the book number three you can then read the fifth book namely the goldstein book so that is the order in which you can read of course if you you did not follow any one of these six book if you don't want to follow any of these six of them you can uh, read any other classical mechanics book of course there are many books are available but however these are the rec recommended book books because they are well written it covers uh, most of the syllabus or almost all the syllabus that is uh, listed above above means here unit 1 to 5 sometimes uh, it may not cover so in that case you'll have to follow some other book but in the classical mechanics case it uh, all the things are covered so there is no trouble so try to get some book like uh, the thornton and marion or the david morin okay so that it, you can start with an introduction a few chapters can be studied from these two books then we can start after uh, uh, reading one or two chapters from other books then you can start entering the goldstein book and uh, see how the book is okay so to read the goldstein book first of all you need to have uh, adequate mathematics background so that is the reason and of course london and lifshitz is uh, once again a uh, very standard book and it is also uh, uh, it is also a difficult book unless you have considerable mathematics background so that's why we have kept it at the end once you have a sufficient mathematics background uh, you can read books number five and six so this is the overall introduction and to write the competitive examination such as the gate or the csa or net you don't require anything else this is enough book number one to five or one to six whatever is listed here that's uh, enough here and there you can always refer to some other book for uh, clarification uh, to understand some more topics or for clarity or a different style of approach for such reasons you can always refer to other books but other than that you don't require uh, uh, any special uh, any special book only for uh, the competitive examinations it's not required so whatever is listed here that is enough and of course you can always uh, keep the previous year question papers and then uh, start uh, writing the solutions by yourself so the methodology is this is clear we have explained how the the appearance of the the syllabus will be like this irrespective of whatever be the paper so in this case this is the classical mechanics and of course you can go back and see the other so similarly you have 
the mathematical methods and physics if you see once again similarly unit 50 unit is there so you'll be having the five different units and then some books will be some recommended books are there you can always refer to any other book if you are interested okay so let us come back to our original thing so now now what is this classical mechanics is all about and and you have already studied the mechanics paper in your bsc uh, maybe one or two papers uh, sometimes relativity also you have studied uh, here i would like to tell something about the relativity the last unit is there so the in the, in the relativity of course the length contraction and uh, time dilation is the only thing most of the time the bsc students must have studied in your uh, bsc the main thing that we are going to study in the special theory of relativity in this msc program is the detailed i mean derivation of the lorentz transformation and then of course these two things are standard you, you already know then we will be discussing uh, what is this uh, minkowski space and uh, we will be dealing this with the uh, with the tensor notation so that is the most important thing so for the special theory of relativity we will be introducing the covariant uh, tensor and the contravariant tensor and we are going to explain or we are supposed to deal with how to write the four vector formulation okay vector is not three vector it's a four vector because it's a four dimensional space so the the topic that you are going to study in the relativity will be uh, will not be the same as the standard bsc course because in the bsc course of course you will be studying the definition of the inertial frame then you will be followed by length contraction time dilation and uh, some twin paradox etc so such things you will be studying so now the the emphasis will be mainly on the four dimensional minkowski space and then how to write down all the uh, equations in the in the covariant form that is the meaning so expressing the equations in the covariant form is the main purpose of the theory of relativity that is there in the last unit of course it's very in, the last one is only an introduction to the general relativity we can't enter into the more details because you need to complete uh, uh, further additional mathematical background is required so general relativity is um, uh, is kept to a minimum unless you take some special paper with the astrophysics etc at that time you study more about the general relativity general relativity and cosmology goes as a as a special paper it's an optional paper uh, which is also called the soft core okay it's not compulsory only those who are interested they can take the paper and the title of the paper is general relativity and cosmology that you will be doing in the final year i mean the second year so this is about the theory of relativity okay coming to the other portion of this thing so what we will be doing in the entire uh, classical mechanics course of course so special theory of relativity i have explained so what is that you are going to do from the uh, unit 1 2 3 4 is mainly the mathematical formulation of mechanics so that is exactly what you are going to study it is not the same thing that standard bsc courses will have by that i mean that we are not going to repeat so it is the titles will look very similar but the you will have to understand that they are not the subject wise it is not repeating that is a point that you need to know uh, i used to explain this every time because the students will always get their an opinion let me show this once again for example if you see the central field kepler's problem if you uh, when when you read the kepler's problem in the msc syllabus same kepler's problem is there in the higher secondary school you have the kepler's first law second law etc once again you will be studying the three laws in this uh, msc also so uh, the doubt generally comes once again you already studied in um, school you you must have generally studied in bsc also and once again what is the point in doing this kepler's problem so that is the point that you need to know if you are not knowing this point what is that you are planning to do in the msc course you generally feel that uh, things are repeating and uh, you will you will get bored or even before listening to the lecture you yourself make a decision that this particular course is not good like that opinion you yourself get and when your mind is in such a kind of uh, uh, if your mind says uh, this kind of opinion then you will not listen to uh, any lecture that is going on so that will be more dangerous so that is why in the very beginning i used to tell that the titles will look very similar for example you see this conservation law 
of linear and angular momentum you study from the 11th standard 12th standard in school once again in bsc okay so what are you going to do in the lagrangian dynamics so that clarity should be there so that is why uh, once again i am emphasizing that this particular course classical mechanics is going to be mathematically oriented uh, rather than based on experimental evidences so let us um, uh, i'll just uh, show the board now and then see uh, that this is what i have written so basically if you are going to see the newton's law that is how you start with let me write down you have already studied the newton's laws you have 1 2 3 etc three laws are there and one of the standard equations that you write down for the second law is that f equal to ma so this is the standard thing which is well known to you and you have been solving this particular equation to uh, to apply to various problems and then you know what is this equation all about now the question is that what is this classical mechanics that we are going to do in the masters program is we are going to ask this question what is this f equal to ma that's okay what is this means you already know let me explain what it is newton has obtained this equation based on experiments that's all you you take certain object apply some force and find out where that object moves and by that newton has calculated how fast the object is moving by that newton has once again discovered what is meant by first derivative and second der derivative which means the velocity and acceleration so newton himself is a mathematician that is the first point that i would like to emphasize that he is the person who has introduced the concept of the first di di differentiation and later of course leibniz has given the formal way of writing down some formulas for differentiation but our newton is the person who gave you the Uh, the concept of the derivative differentiation concept itself came from newton and newton being a mathematician you can you can see many formulas newton quotes formula for the integration newton gregory backward formula newton forward formulas there are many of the mathematical handbook if you see there will be several formulas will be given oh, with the name of newton so newton himself is a mathematician and he has done certain experiments and then Uh, the experimental data suggested that the the data will follow an equation like this f equal to ma that means the applied force the f is applied here and what is measured is the acceleration so what is applied and what is measured should be clear to you so this is the one which is applied here if you apply this particular force to a particular system a physical system the system will gain acceleration so this is what you are going to measure and m is known to you before doing the experiment you already know the mass of the object so you perform the experiment and then we have numbers data means you have several numbers and uh, all those numbers have suggested newton that uh, the data follows the equation like this f equal to m a and uh, later the equation is uh, given the name newton's law that's all about it so now we are asking a different question now what is the question is where from this equation is actually coming what is the origin so now the question is this this is the question what is the origin of the equation this is the question origin of means from where it is coming okay newton has written down means based on experiments he has written that's important suppose i don't have any experiment for example i don't want to do any experiment uh, why such a equation should be there first of all that is the in in first place why the nature nature means a mechanical system for example why the nature should obey an equation of the form f equal to ma that is the question which is equivalent to what we have asked here so this is a very uh, fundamental question so we are uh, we are asking the question what is the Uh, origin originating place okay from where the equation or why should such equation exist at all why at all should it exist so such a question you are asking and uh, uh, typically we expect the answer so our answer is that we are expecting we are expecting means whoever is going to ask such a question that particular person is expecting the answer in terms of a very fundamental principle which means uh, which means 
we are believing that there should exist a very fundamental principle that controls the universe okay in the universe you have of course the universe means you have a mechanical system thermodynamic system statistical system etc so various systems are there that is only categorized because of our our um, understanding but otherwise there is an entire uh, entire universe which is we call a natural system so why the nature should uh, should obey an equation of the form f equal to me so the question is good. therefore it's very clear that the question is very fundamental in nature so why at all should it exist so that is equivalent to saying that what is the origin of the equation f equal to me and typically uh, whoever is asking this particular question that person is expecting the answer to be answer means he is expecting that there should exist that is there should exist some kind of fundamental principle so which means let me write down here for clarity so we are indirectly asking what's the fundamental principle behind f equal to me because the the point that is to be noted here is that now this particular statement clearly tells that f equal to me itself is not a principle that is what that is what we mean after asking this question you come to an understanding that f equal to me itself is not a principle there is some other principle ba based on which this is working okay so that is called the origin you are digging further and then asking why it should exist at all so we are going to see the answer of course uh, in the, the nature really works nature means not necessarily mechanical system non mechanical system also works based on the this kind of a principle so there is a principle means very broad in nature Br very broad means not necessarily um, not necessarily limited to mechanics for example uh, it can go to thermodynamics it can go to electrodynamics it can go to any other quantum mechanical system or it can even go beyond physics need not be physics at all it can be any other dynamical system 